when I arrived there, I think in the summer of 95, um, Nick Glennie Smith w w had been assisting Hans for a while. As I say, Mark Streidenfeld was his excellent tech. And there were a couple of other dudes, I, I can't remember their names, um, just who were doing whatever they were doing. And that was about it, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was lots of potential and opportunity, but the people often ask me, you know, what was this sort of plan? Yeah. I don't know about what Hans would say, but he'd probably say the same as me. I, I don't think it really was a plan at that stage. It's like, do, do you want to have, have a go at this? Yeah, well, get on with it. Let's, let's give it a go. Okay, so you worked closely with Hans yeah. on a number of projects. Yeah. Uh, at what point was it clear that you... Uh, well, uh, you actually, really um, I guess 18 months passed really, really quickly. Um, and I you know, barely came out to see the light of day. Hmm. Um, and, you know, I've always, always been a kind of pen and paper guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, there's one of the reasons I was kind of locked in this closet um, was to, to, to learn uh, the software that he, he uses, which is Cubase, which was, I now use. Okay. Um, but, you know, I learned, learned very, very quickly. I was immersed in, in, in a certain way of going about organizing the composition of, of, of music. And mm -hmm. um, it really appealed to me because I didn't know anything about, I hadn't even occurred to me that people would use like banks of computers to mock up an orchestral mm -hmm. sound. Yeah, you know, I knew about synthesizers and whatnot, but right. uh, that really, I didn't need to, really, you know, I would have been happy if someone had thrown away the key of the closet. I was, I was so stoked. I was just immersed myself in that, whatever tasks I could get arranging this or doing a cue for one of Hans' movies or, you know, helping him with this or that. I just, um, you yeah, know, dived into it and um, it really, really appealed to me. It was so different to anything I'd ever done. And, the, you know, I was getting really stimulated with music to specifically to pictures. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to watch, you know, his thing, you know, the way he would go about things, his mistakes and his successes and not be the kind of fall guy, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. be in the background and have some responsibility, but not have everybody bearing down on me. You know, and I was able to make mistakes and you know, be yelled at, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Have to get up and get on with it. But um, after about 18 months, I was at Hans's birthday party when I, uh, he invited a few, few of his friends. And I was sitting opposite um, um, a, a guy who, Dan Ireland, who, are, who, who said to me, I really want to get to Hans, I want him to do my movie. I, I know Hans really well, but I've only been, ever really produced films, but I'm, I've directed this film. Uh, it's called The Whole Wide World, and uh, I really want Hans to do it, you know, put it in a good way, or, you know, mention it to him. So later that night, I think I got a ride with Hans home or whatever, and I said, man, he, Danny really wants you to do this movie. He's like, oh, you can do it. How about you do it? Like, really? this, is, this is Hans now saying, yeah, so, yeah you should do it. Okay. I said, well, look, you do it. Well, you know, Dan, Danny will trust me. Well, well, you know, you, you do it. And like, if you fall flat on your face, I'll be there and we'll, we'll sort it out. Um, so I did. And that, that was, after that, I, I never really worked on Hans's movies right, yeah. after that. And I was kind of... Essentially had your own career. Well, I would say career. But I had my own path very much, okay. um, to which I was sort of hurtling down that path, whether I liked it or not, then. Right. I, could I could probably have done with a few more years of apprenticeship, actually, but oh, there you go. I don't know about that. But that was really, that was really key to, to having a score to do mm -hmm. and like a real life director. Mm -hmm. you know. One of the things you mentioned that you essentially was a, it would be a pen and paper uh -huh. kind of guy, and yet technology seems to be such a strong component uh, in all the work yep. today. So could you talk a little bit about how you uh, embrace that if, if in fact that's the right word. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. I, ha I have. I have. That's not to say I don't use pen and paper, but you know, one of the things that Hans taught me was that um, it's like our demos are going to be better than anybody's. Anybody's. So I'm like, how's that, Hans? He said, well, forget the music for a second. We'll assume that the music's going to be right, but it's, they're going to sound fantastic. And, that, and this is what's got to happen. You've got to look, really, really work at programming, not just sloppily, but really, really, really intricately. Mm -hmm. um, and coupled with that, he, 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 at that time, uh, 
he decided to sample an orchestra, which I don't think many people have done that, probably couldn't afford to do that. Right. But Hans did that and I, and, I, and I conducted it, which is a pretty gnarly task, actually. <laughs> There's not much conducting to do. It's like the poor old fourth desk of the violas. Okay, C, mezzo <laughs> forte. And they play. Play, yeah. yeah. And then D. It's and then queuing, D, right? Yeah. Right. So, so having done that, I was like, okay, well, you, you can have the samples mm -hmm. because they're not publicly available. So really good sounds, a really sound knowledge of the platform that I was using, which just happened to be Cubase. It could have been Logic or any of these things. Right. Um, but I had a couple of fundamental problems early on, which was in order to play Hans' samples, you needed like, 20 samplers, I couldn't afford that. They were so expensive at that mm -hmm. time. And I think things have, have cheap, cheapened up, but mm -hmm. I couldn't afford that. So that, the next thing was to get a bank loan, which I did. And uh, on the premise that, you know, that, that would probably, probably be smart. To, I mean, I, I, could, I couldn't partake of this thing because the, the samples were so huge in, in, in uh, you know, volume. It required all these, so, so anyhow, all these obstacles were thrown away, but um, one just got on with it. And uh, so now, fabulous sounding orchestra in front of me. I mean, it's just so stimulating, absolutely stimulating. I mean, I'm sure these days one can, one can buy it, they're probably reasonably expensive, but there are orchestras like the orchestra right. I'm referring to available. Absolutely. You know, other people have gone out and, and done that. But right. uh, that was really, really stimulating. For, I don't think I could have really shut myself away for so many months that turned into years mm -hmm. if if like everything sounded crap even if i knew it was gonna sound great with with the live orchestra right i just wouldn't have wouldn't just wouldn't have been any fun right i think a lot of young composers today fall into a reliance on the technology and it doesn't always sound that good and yet you have managed yeah. to to really have both you you're brilliant mm -hmm. as an orchestral writer you know the orchestra you know how to make the orchestra sound really good and at the same time, the way you work with technology is truly second to none. You know, we were talking earlier about, you, you literally have defined a genre in terms of combining orchestral writing with the technology that's available today. Oh, man, as I said to it earlier, I do hope not I haven't defined it. Because <laughs> you know, from, from, where I, from where I sit, um, you know, I I've been really fortunate and uh, um, really critically, I've had a, a few opportunities that either I've, that either you might say I've been just really lucky to have, or like I, I really sort of tried to make happen. Anyhow, it doesn't matter how one gets there, perhaps, but once an opportunity pops up, to really, really, net, you know, really stop at nothing to right. to go for it, right. and then try and, you know, try and maintain that, if not build on something. But from 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 my perspective, I, I'm always. Um, you know, looking forward and up, and that's one of the things. You know, I, I moved um, away from Media Ventures from Hans's place several years ago now, uh, not for any like uh, weird reason. Like Hans and I uh, are just as great friends as we are now as we, we we always were, but more that he cast a damn great shadow. Like, <laughs> yeah, hard you know, to get out from yeah, under. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, you know, and, and by the way. <laughs> I was always drinking, it was his, him who put the coffee in the coffee machine. Mm -hmm. you know, it was him who mended, uh, you know, painted the walls if they were, you know, it's about time I stood up and got my own, you know, took responsibility for, for what I was doing. So that was brilliant and um, so I, I moved away to not far, like a mile down the road um, and have my own studio and, uh, you know, I, I have a, a few people working with me very much on the same lines as, hopefully, as, as, as I did when I first right. came to America. You know, what goes around comes around. Because you know, obviously I'm often asked, how, 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 would you, how would you recommend to break into this thing? And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, re a really good answer for that because I do feel from my own point of view, so, so many moons align just right. I mean, I bumped into Hans. I, you know, if I hadn't have done that, it's not we're really talking about the music at this point, more about how did you have that opportunity? Well, uh, a series of things. But m more than that, the, uh, you know, I, I have you know, three or four cracking young composers um, at my studio um, who are 
making their own way too. And uh, you know, th that certain that part of what Hans was like, okay, we put in your work doing doing this. You know, take what you like from what how I go about things, and then go go your own way. Um, but it's interesting. It's uh, it's nothing. I don't have a. Uh, it's nothing like media ventures in in that respect. It's not a factory of people. But it is. You know, like I have um, the team, a, per the team a permanent team. music editor. Right. You know, so, someone who's who's like with me. You know, th th those sort of things. I. I can't imagine being so random, just like going from one film and having a whole set of different people around me. You know, got to trust someone to record the stuff out of my room, the Absolutely. stuff that I sequence. Absolutely. You know, has got to sound exactly right. as I hear it right. when it gets to the mix room. Right. And in order to feel comfortable about that, you know, inevitably one one finds someone you really can trust. I mean, like, grab them, say, come come work with me. Please. Okay. Um, but you know, I learned learned very very quickly. I was immersed in 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 a certain way of going about organising the composition of of, of music, and mm -hmm. um, it really appealed to me because I didn't know anything about. I hadn't even occurred to me that people would use like banks of computers to mock up an orchestral mm -hmm. sound. Yeah, really really quickly, um, and I you know, barely came out to see the light of day. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I've always always been a kind of pen and paper guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I one of the reasons I was kind of locked in this closet um, was to, to to learn the software that he he uses, which is Cubase, which was I know you. What was this sort of plan? Yeah, I don't know about what Hans would say, but he'd probably say the same as me. I, I don't think it really was a plan at that stage. It's like, do you, do you want to have, have a go at this? Yeah, well, get on with it. Let's, let's give it a go. Okay. So you worked closely with Hans yeah. on a number of projects. Yeah. Uh, at what point was it clear that you... Uh, well, uh, you actually, really um, I guess 18 months past. When I arrived, I think in the summer of 95, um, Nick Glennie Smith w w had been assisting Hans for a while. As I say, Mark Streidenfeld was his excellent tech. And there were a couple of other dudes, I, I can't remember their names, um, just who were doing whatever they were doing. And that was about it, really. Um, so there was lots of potential and opportunity, but the people often ask me, you know, I knew about synthesizers and whatnot, but right. uh, that really, I didn't need to, you know, I would have been happy if someone had thrown away the key of the closet. I was, I was so stoked. I was just immersed myself in that, whatever tasks I could get, arranging this or doing a cue for one of Hans' movie, or, you know, helping him with this or that. I just, um, you know, 